In today's video, I'm going to explain to you how to quickly interpret study of interventions using the acronym PCOT. This will help you organize your thoughts and save you a ton of time when you're trying to get a quick understanding of an article, whether it's a randomized or non-randomized study. Before we go any further, just a reminder that whatever I share here is not medical advice and the opinions are exclusively mine. They do not necessarily reflect the opinions of my employers. So my name is Randerson Cardozo. I'm a cardiologist in Boston in the United States. And in this channel, we talk about how research can transform your career, specifically one type of research, systematic review and meta-analysis that is within reach to you, that you can do it independently. That's what I teach you here. If you like this content, if it's interesting to you, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that like button. All right, so tell me if you faced this problem before. You have to read a paper, but you only have a short amount of time to do it. You just have to get through it quickly and understand that manuscript. Or how about this other situation when you do have time to read a paper, but then you stare at it and you read for what seems like hours, but after a long time, you still have no clue of what that article is about. You still don't have a clear, organized thought about what that paper is and what was done and what are their results. To help you with these situations, I want to you introduce you a very specific framework called PCOT. So this acronym starts with the letter P, P for population. And you can get the population of the study from the abstract, but then you should generally take a look in the method sections as well. Let's take the Canvas trial published in the New England Journal of Medicine a few years ago as an example. If you read the abstract, you will quickly see that they enrolled 10,142 patients with type 2 diabetes and high cardiovascular risk. So in a nutshell, that's the population of the study. You got that information from the abstract, but you should go to the method sections in the paper and get more details of this population. So over here, you can see that the manuscript describes in detail exactly who are these patients, how do they define high cardiovascular risk. There's a section in methods, and then you have the participants. That's the P. That's the population of the study. Okay, next we go to the letter I. I stands for intervention in this context. It could also be E for exposure, if you're not necessarily talking about an intervention. So in this example, in the Canvas study, it's very straightforward. The intervention was canagliflozin, a specific type of SGLT2 inhibitor. Just as straightforward as that I for intervention, you have the letter C. C stands for control. In this control group, you can have placebo, you can have another drug. Sometimes it's just the absence of the intervention. It's very variable. In this example, in the Canvas study, the control group was placebo. So again, very simple, very straightforward. It usually is just like that. Next, we go to the letter O. O is for outcome. Now, in a randomized trial like this one, or even in cohort studies, generally you have lots of different outcomes. And how detailed you want to be with your outcomes when you're formulating the P-code framework depends on the context. If you're just trying to get a sense of the paper really quickly, you may want to focus just on the main outcomes, the primary outcome, a few important secondary outcomes. But then if you want to be more detailed, you can actually list all the outcomes that this study analyzed. So in this case, in the Canvas trial, the composite outcome of death, stroke, or myocardial infarction was the primary endpoint. But you can look on this table here, on table three of that trial, that they actually had a lot of different outcomes that were analyzed. So they also looked at hospitalization, death, myocardial infarction, progression of albuminuria, and a lot of different outcomes. Next, we go to the two T's. So PCOT has two T's in the end. One T is for type of study, which in this case is straightforward. It's a randomized clinical trial, a randomized control trial. So the second T is for follow-up time. In this example, in the Canvas trial, you can see here that they follow the patients for a mean of 188 weeks or roughly 3.6 years. So with this framework, we quickly got a great understanding of the paper. We know the population, the intervention, the control group, the outcomes, and the two type of study and type of follow-up. So how you could use this is very variable. You could use this to quickly get an understanding of the paper when you have to do it on the run. You, you could really use this to get a more in-depth, detailed understanding of the paper when you're reading it as a whole, but still have a basic framework to organize your thoughts. And you can use it to communicate the results to someone else. If we're presenting this, for example, you might say something like this. In the Canvas trial, 10,142 patients with 
with type 2 diabetes and high cardiovascular risk were randomized to canagliflozin or placebo. In a median follow-up of 3.6 years, the primary outcome of death from cardiovascular causes, non-fatal myocardial infarction or non-fatal stroke, was significantly reduced in the canagliflozin group with a hazard ratio of 0.86. That was their primary outcome. So you can see that in this quick presentation, we have here all the elements of the PCOD question. We have the population, the intervention, the control, the outcomes, the type of study, I said that it was randomized, and the time of follow-up, I said that the average follow-up was 3.6 years. So next time you're organizing your thoughts for an article, don't forget to use the PCOD framework. All right, don't forget to hit the subscribe button either, and I'll see you on the next video.